is a hard topic. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Right. <laughs> okay. What about these, there's this huge, uh, there's this huge conversation that goes on online, especially in some of the circles that I listen to and watch about like sexless marriage, right? Marriage without any intimacy. And this is a big, like, this is something that I think a lot more people deal with than we realize because, you know, nobody talks about it until mm-hmm. it's online and anonymous or, or whatever. So now someone in that kind of a situation, can you speak on that a little bit? Like what, maybe sometimes what's going on and what kind of the path to a solution is to something like that? Well, this is, this is a, and I'm glad you mentioned it because this is a really tough topic Mm -hmm. and there are a couple of different, different things. Has it always been that way? Or is it something that's happened over time? And a lot of times people don't know how to talk about it. And this is, one, this is one of those cases when I get a little annoyed, that's an understatement, with members of the female persuasion who look at men and go, you guys, all you want is sex. You're just, you're just hound dogs. You don't care about me. I'm just a vessel. And that is so far from the truth for yeah. most men. Yeah, yeah. Most men, it is a It is a way of showing their love. It is a way of truly connecting. It is a way of being intimate, not just physically, but emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so to have that shunted aside as, you know, it's, it's disrespectful. Now, here's the thing. There is a lot of misinformation, both for men and women, about how women work sexually Mm -hmm. and Um, And so this is part of the challenge. There are hormonal fluctuations throughout the month. Um, You know, there's times of our lives when things are very different. Um, You know, women are much more creatures of their hormones and also of their thought process. Um, And and you you were talking about... um, before we got on uh, on the air about the masculine and feminine and mm-hmm. and a, and a lot of times women spend a lot of time in their masculine energy outside of the home and to come into their feminine energy well first off that's not always encouraged which i think is crazy but okay yeah, um, I, agree. I agree with you completely but but you've got these two masculine energies fighting with each other mm-hmm. and that does that is not conducive to a good sex life, um, and so but but sexless marriages it's it, well, especially if one person is I mean if both people are aren't interested in sex great that's not a problem, but yeah. it's the discussion of what's enough, it's a discussion of how do how do I work, um, there is a, at least 50% of women are what we call responsive desire, meaning that women don't feel, arou- don't, don't feel desire until they're actually physically aroused as that's opposed like, to- that, Okay, that, that is, okay, that surprises me that you say that because I have not heard that term before. I've never mm-hmm. heard that. Yeah. 50% of women, this is like a, this is like a known thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but no, no. but but this is my point. Yeah, the knowledge is out there. People mm-hmm. just don't have it, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you are, and many men are, what are called spontaneous desire, meaning okay, whoop, I thought pops mm-hmm. into my head, I'm raring to go. And this is this is a lot of the tension between why 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 does my wife not initiate? Does that mean she doesn't find me sexy? Does no? Mm-hmm. It's just she's that's just not the way she's wired and by the way this is a biological thing this is not has anything to do with whether or not i find you attractive or sexy or whatever it's got nothing to do with that it's not you it's almost any it's almost like a personality type thing well yeah and but here's the difference and here's what gets really confusing about it in the beginning when our hormones are running when our when our in love hormones are running rampant we have spontaneous arousal or desire. Mm -hmm. It's only once we settle in to the relationship that, and and usually it's, it's, it's when those, it's when those in love hormones and and neurotransmitters calm down. So -hmm. this is a biological thing, not a, not a choice thing. Gotcha. Okay. Then, then our natural tendency to have responsive desire takes over and the guy goes, wait 
a minute, what happened here? Yeah. Okay. I see. So maybe he interprets it as like, oh, she lost interest in me, but it's actually just, you know, it's like, how fascinating. I did yeah. not know there was a name for that. And I did mm-hmm. not know that there was a statistic for it. <laughs> wow. How that is crazy. A lot of times it's, are we making time? And I'm not just talking about time for the actual sex act itself, mm-hmm. but time for the relationship, time yeah. to connect with each other, time to, to be able to move in to that. You know, are we getting an, and, and, and how we are health wise? Are we getting enough sleep? Are we eating the right things? It all plays in to this. And, you know, I talk about this where right now, busy is a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And busy is antithetical to a good sex life. <laughs> yes, you know? yeah, that's true. hundred yeah. percent. And, and if you're trying to squeeze it in, you know, because, and again, women take most, most, for most women, it takes us more time to rev up. And so it's like, really, we've got 15 minutes. Okay. It's not good for me. Mm -hmm. It's like not worth, it's not, not worth the work. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, as opposed to, and again, we can have, and sometimes taking the goal of, of intercourse off the table where mm-hmm. sex is so much more than this one act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but if we get so fixated and, and, you know, on this one act and that mm-hmm. nothing else is going to be good enough, well then, you know, we're in this all or nothing mindset versus, well, what could we do that both of us would enjoy this mm-hmm. evening? Yeah. It's a, it's pressure, right? There's a lot of pressure that can creep in there. And I think, I think that that there's another part of that maybe where I, I really feel when I coach men, especially in the dating, uh, in the dating marketplace, like men who are trying to better their dating lives, a lot of men deal with sexual shame. And, and so from that perspective for men, I think that also plays into it because it's like, it's like, so they get up a certain amount of nerve to be like, Hey, you want to have sex, uh, fighting off this, like, Oh, I'm a pervert. Cause I want sex or blah, blah, blah. These like, well, they've right. been told they are, which they're or, not, but okay. No, no, Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. But they, but there's a little part of them that they have to fight that back that mm-hmm. belief. Right. And then it's like, well, she's like, and then she says something like, maybe like, well, you know, I'm kind of like, I'm a little tired. Right. But then, so this is like, instead of him being like, Oh, gotcha. I hear what you're saying. Let's be creative. Let's do something like, instead of having the freedom to have that energy, fighting this shame. Now, this isn't always, I'm not saying this is always the case, but Mm -hmm. what do you think about that? Like, do you think that that's a factor? Well, I do, but here's, but going back to the responsive desire, Mm -hmm. because here's the thing. And if women know that if, if, if both people know this, then it's kind of like, okay, well, let's just start doing something. Let's cuddle. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's touch. Because that's how that arousal starts happening. Mm-hmm. Right. But, but if you just ask me cold, it's like, yeah, not really. I'm not really interested. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> and it's like, so, so then, so then he doesn't under, neither one of them really understands where that, where that statement is coming from. And, and when, and if you don't understand the context, then it's like, oh, she doesn't want me, which mm-hmm. then plays on, gets into his head about, you know, you talk about sexual shame or just, just, you know, I'm not, I'm not who she wants. I'm not enough. And, and then that just, you know, then we just start that, that downward spiral. Gotcha. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's, that's so, the way you explain it makes it so clear. And that's so interesting. It's, it's like something that we should be given in a manual when we're born, right? (laughs) We should, we should get that label. Like, here's your, here's your specs. (laughs) Right. Right. I mean, and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I mean, and, And a lot of the research, the traditional research that's been done around sex has been done with men. And so that's the model that we have. And I'm saying 50%, about 50% of women don't match that model. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So everybody's frustrated. The men are frustrated. The women are frustrated. It's like, why isn't this working? Absolutely. Yeah. They're both frustrated. No doubt. Not, you know, I mean, a lot of them are. Um, Okay. So now this, this responsive desire this 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 business is one is one really important like part of this discussion about the the sexless marriage mm-hmm. or the marriage that's struggling with intimacy right uh are there are there any other 
mind blowers in there <laughs> that we should cover because, you know. Well, and, and um, a lot of times, and, and I, and I'm thinking of a, he's, he's actually a friend of mine and I, and I was really trying to help him um, where he has been in a sexless marriage almost since day one. And he won't confront her about it. Oh, really? Let me rephrase that. When he has tried to bring it up, she has, she has been adamant in shutting him down. Okay. And he doesn't know how to navigate that. And I don't think he's alone. I think there are a lot of men. I was going to say, just hearing you describe that, I'm sure I've talked to men who would probably absolutely be like, oh, I I can understand. Like, how do you deal with that? Like, I've talked to men in that situation, I'm sure. This is a case, and, and I talked about it before. Well, one this is something that we that that couples need to be talking about a lot you know um and with greater frequency because like i said there are times in our lives when things change but it's also about the boundary and the expectation mm -hmm. um part of being in this relationship because many of us are serial monogamous we are we are inherently monogamous we we are not we can't be involved sexually with with more than one person yeah. um part of that has to do with the fact that it isn't that when we are sexually engaged with another person we are releasing oxytocin which is the bonding hormone mm -hmm. and so i'm so so i mean yeah we can have one night stands and 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 that's fine but but repetitive sexual involvement with a person frequently and almost and, I, and i'd be tempted to say almost always then involves an emotional component mm -hmm. and so if you are basically a monogamous person i want to be intimate with you with you in all of these ways being physical physical intimacy being one of them yeah. And I don't want to have it with somebody else. And it's important to have. I mean, we've spent the last two years um, in this horrible situation where people have had to be isolated mm -hmm. and, and not being able to touch each other. And what we know is that touch to human beings is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. sex, touch. Yo, just course, plain, yeah. simple touch. Yes. Yeah. And and so, and so a lot of times, in, not only are the marriages sexless, they're affectionless. Yeah. Yeah. Sex is only one degree of it, right? It's, it, there's many other degrees that, that are, I, I often say sex is the most intimate social construct, but there are so many others, right? So many mm -hmm. others. And so, yeah, no, great point. That's a super good point. And, and so, when, so when I, as your partner, am denying you a basic human need that is not okay mm 